Are you struggling in your faith? Are you pretending you're happy but stuck in a spiritual rut? Are you tired of listening to famous pastors and preachers who make it sound so easy? Welcome to Broken Catholic, the number one Protestant and Catholic voice in America. I talk about the important things that nobody else is talking about, like how to align with God's plan for your life, because I believe this is where 90% of Christians get stuck. And I tackle the negative self-talk that we all secretly struggle with, but won't admit. My guests are brave Protestants and Catholics who share their struggles, their fears, and their daily holy habits that help them win in their spiritual lives. I'm your host, your coach, your friend, Joseph Warren. I'm also a broken Catholic and former atheist and a spiritual coach to Christian business owners and CEOs who are married with children. This show was created for you, the broken Catholic, who's pushing to get your spouse, your kids, and yourself to heaven. Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you're just one surrender prayer away. Today, my featured guest is Chris Ackerson, and he is the Tennessee State Director for Every Man a Warrior. This is a men's group that's drawing men back and closer to God. Uh, now, Chris is a native of Tennessee. He's a good old Southern boy for some of you out there that are Southern boys. Chris wan wandered in and out of his faith in a casual way until God met him personally at a large men's event. I love that, that God came and met him. So many times God will come and interrupt what we're up to, to call us what, into what we should be doing. So Chris's journey with Christ was somewhat random for several years until another man took him under his wing and showed him that God had a bigger plan for his life. Chris eventually went to work with his mentor in a regional men's ministry until God brought every man a warrior into the picture. Since September of 2017, he has been blessed to serve men and churches in Tennessee and beyond as partners with them to become leaders, men who walk with God, succeed in life, and spiritually multiply. That's so important. Discipleship. Chris is married for 26 years uh, to his beautiful wife, Clarissa. They have four grown children, two sons, and a daughter in college, and one son who is married and serving in the United States Army. You can find Chris at everymanawarrior.com everymanawarrior.com. Chris, welcome to Broken Catholic. Go ahead and fill in some of the gaps in that intro, would you? Yeah, Joseph, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, th th that intro covers pretty well. Um, I, I joke a lot about being a Southern boy. That was an excellent Southern accent that you managed to put on there. Um, I do live in the deep South in Tampa, Florida. <laughs> that's my right. Now, Florida doesn't count. Florida is its own thing. But um, I, I joke sometimes that I think 95% of us Southern guys that go off to SEC colleges and all that, our testimonies are about 95% the same. That we maybe grew up in the church, we've got that influence, we go to college, we sow our wild oats, and then we jump into life and we just start working. And that was certainly my picture until, like you said, the, uh, at this big men's conference where I was in the middle of it and I loved it. 65,000 guys singing holy, holy, holy is cool. And it just struck me that um, it reminded me when I was young, when I would get taken on these emotional highs through a church experience or a you know, young life was a high school ministry I was involved in, but then I'd crash and burn and probably just got tired of that. I wouldn't have put words to it. Um, but God just met me there and said, Hey, there's a, there's a relationship to be had here. And my prayer was, okay, God, no more roller coaster, but can we be slow and steady? Um, and that's the thing that put me into a good church. Joseph, I think a lot of us guys get into good churches and we're doing the good right thing we feel like, but we're really just sitting in a pew. And this is what I called the random walk that you, that you mentioned, that I got good things, but it wasn't something I could turn around and take another man or my sons along that pathway because it was random. And so then the impact of an individual man into my life uh, really turn things around. And, and so I like what you just started us out with, right? The random spirituality that most of us live in versus consistent spirituality, meaning we actually have holy habits built in to our every days. What shows up for you in that? Yeah, I think the, the distinction between religion and relationship is are terms that I use a lot with guys. And not that I have anything against religion, 
but I think we take religion and the activities that are in there, these church activities, and count those as our Christian walk. And we miss the fact that there is a very personal relationship for us to have with the God of the universe because of what Jesus did for us. And yet we're busy doing activities that maybe let us pat ourselves on the back, but we really aren't engaging personally with God. All right. So BC Nation, Broken Catholic Nation, you know, Chris is speaking right to you and I. He's speaking to our hearts and he's asking, are you just checking the boxes in your spiritual walk? Or are you building a relationship that will last for eternity? So for you guys out there that are married, uh, you wouldn't just walk around with a list of boxes to check in your relationship with your spouse, would you? Because if she ever found it, she would rip your head off. Let's first off be clear about that, okay? <laughs> but you would never do that because you understand that you're in relationship with her. You're one flesh with her. You're building and doing life together with her. You're serving a, a long-term purpose. You're raising kids together, right? There's no boxes to check. There's no road like, okay, you know, I'm going to do this four times a month in order to get this. There's none of that. There's no obligatory uh, type of uh, experience built into relationship, not a real relationship. Real relationship looks like love. You're motivated by love to do the things that are right. You're motivated by love to do the things that are right. So the question is, are you going to church because you're motivated by love to go and spend time with your creator and worship him every Sunday? Are you motivated by love to go and spend quiet time with him every morning? And if you're not, that's fine, but at least get real about it. Yeah. You got to know where you're starting. What shows up for you in that, Chris? Yeah, I love that you uh, ended that with you got to get real about it. I, I think there's a lot of us that uh, kind of live in ignorance of this. And um, um, I grew up in, in the Protestant church um, and know some about the Catholic church where your background is just from lots of friends. But I, I think all of us have this tendency to, to think a little bit is enough. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's mostly that we're ignorant. Nobody showed it to us. You, you mentioned that it stood out in my story, the fact that a man stepped in and invested in me. He built enough of a relationship that he could challenge me to go deeper. And so then this unfolding of the, of the relationship with Jesus that goes on today. Um, it, doesn't it seem sometimes that as you get a little bit deeper with Jesus, you realize 10 times more how deep he is that there's more and more of him for us that he just wants to keep giving and giving. And so um, by getting real, by recognizing that it's a relationship, that it does in fact take work and investment of our time, we got to spend time with him. That's what opens up all the, all the possibilities and the potential that Jesus promises us in an abundant life. Mm, I love it. And, and for you out there listening right now, maybe you're at a place where, you're saying, I'm not sure I want a relationship with Jesus because I'm not sure I want to get real. I kind of like what I'm doing. I, I like my, my bad behaviors, right? Because I've had bad behaviors. I'm sure you've had a few, Chris, right? Yeah. Acting out, we act out in our lives. And, and sometimes we're not ready to get real because we're scared. We're scared that if, if I go and start building this relationship with Jesus, then he may come and confront me on some of the things that I'm doing in my life. And then I have to change. And as humans, we hate change. So a lot of us are scared and, and we don't want to take that jump. Here's my encouragement to you listening right now. If you're in that place, if I just described where you're at, that's where I was at. That's where Chris was at. So many men, that's where you at. So if you're there right now, here's what I say to you. If you don't have the desire for relationship with God, that's totally fine. Let him know that. Go to God in your quiet time and just say, God, I don't have any desire to grow in relationship with you. If that's something you want me to do, put the desire in my heart because I don't know how to do it. I'm busy with stuff. I, I got my life going on. I don't know even what relationship with you looks like. See, that's a prayer that's getting real. That's what God wants. He wants intimacy. Intimacy is where you get real with the other person so real that you're so connected. What do you think about that, Chris? Yeah, so one of the things that um, drew me into this Every Man a Warrior resource that I work in now um, 
it's really a, a leadership training process. And right up front was the, the push of, look, if you're not ready for this, don't do this. Following Jesus in this way is, uh, it's not easy. Uh, he doesn't make a promise that it's this, you know, smooth road all the time. It's just that it's rewarding. And so we really look for guys who are feeling that call you're talking about, Joseph, that they feel that pull on their heart that something's missing and they feel it enough that they're willing to make an investment of their time and effort, their energy, their love. Um, because uh, this is not just a casual Bible study. This is not a look at theology. This is how am I going to learn the basics? And a lot of military guys that have been around this equate it to basic training that we're going to teach you the ways to connect with God that unfortunately we miss too often in the church. We jump guys instead of giving them basic training or 100 level courses, we jump them into two and 300 and 400 level deep dives that they're really not prepared for. And frankly, if you're not ready for it, they're kind of boring. Mm -hmm. And so guys don't find that practical and relevant. And so we want to capture that guy when he feels that call. And we will challenge them. Uh, just I love the fact that you're to the listeners are saying, hey, if you're not ready, just be honest. It's okay. We're, there's no judgment on that. But when you're ready, we want to be ready for you. And sometimes in the church, uh, because we've had decades, even, even centuries of time where we haven't developed men to lead other men like the guy that poured into my life. Too often a guy will go to something like the big conference I went to and come out of it totally ready to have somebody walk them down the path with Jesus and instead follow the path I got and spend some number of years, maybe the rest of their life on a random walk when God has something much more specific in mind for them. So let's get into that. How do we go from random walk with God into an intentional walk or journey with God? How did you do it? What are the two or three steps? Create kind of like a formula for us here because most of us don't know how to get there. Yeah. See, now, now you're coming to our language and what we try to address with Every Man of Warriors, we get told things like, well, go have a quiet time with God. Well, you should be reading the scripture and we send guys out to do that without any real instruction on how to do it. Um, we start in our process with where we feel like Jesus started. When he was asked, what's the greatest commandment? He did not give the great commission to go out all over the world. He didn't say, go get busy. He said, no, the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. So it had it had a primary place in the order, and it had a higher level of importance. And yet we jump over that. We invite people into the relationship. Mm -hmm. And then in, at least in the religious setting, in the church setting, we then work to get people busy. Mm, this we is so to, true. Such yeah, a powerful point. We want to start with teaching guys how to begin to build that love relationship. And we do it with some structure. It's not that, I mean, God's a God of structure. We use some structure to do that, but we want to start giving guys some, some good, simple first steps. How do I spend time every morning with God that starts to grow that relationship? Because you're not awesome. going to jump in it full fledged. All right. Give me step one. How do I do it? So step one in, in our process, we start with the model from Jesus. We saw Jesus spend time with the Father on a regular basis when we're in Scripture. We see, God, we see Jesus, when he is challenged, he is ready with Scripture. So we work with men to be men of the Word, to understand Scripture. And then, consistently, Jesus got away and he prayed. So he listened to the Father, he knew God's Word through the Scripture, and he went to God with his issues. So those are the first three places we start. The first book in our series is just all about learning to walk with God and it's those simple steps. So that's where we start. All right. So let me make sure I got this right. So step one for everybody listening out there, maybe you're as slow as I am. So <laughs> I mean, I'm, just, I'm really going to break this down, right? So listen to the father. Okay. What does that even look like? So how do I do us, it? We take all this in terms of practical skills. That's how we mm -hmm. present it to guys. So the first skill is quiet time. And so we give guys a, a simple structure to begin to have that morning time with God. Uh, we'll point them to, to some specific scriptures. We give them a process to follow, questions to ask, uh, to start them to understand what does it mean when it says to meditate on God's word? That sounds weird. 
okay, well, let's give you some practical ways to do that. When you read a scripture, is there a promise to claim? Is there an application to make? Is there, um, is there something new about God that you see in it? We get guys asking questions. Um, and it's funny, we'll do this in other parts of our life and ask questions, but we think we're going to read scripture and just point something's going to happen. Not that God can't do that, but most of the time he's calling us to dig in. So we teach guys how to have a quiet time. We actually get guys memorizing scripture. And it's funny that that's usually the place a guy will push back initially. Oh, I can't memorize scripture. And yet they know the words to 30 songs. Um, when we get them over that hump and they actually memorize their first scripture or two, and we do it, we quiz each other, we memorize word for word, which I first saw that and thought, how oppressive is that? Until I realized when you're face to face with a guy like you and I are right now on camera and you're holding each other accountable, it becomes fun. It triggers our competitive nature. We have a great time memorizing scripture. And then the last thing we do is- we All right, Chris, before you go into the last thing, I got I to gotta say this, man. You just called out like the entire Catholic church. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely love it. Okay. And you're right, because yeah. we were not raised to memorize scripture. We weren't. We were raised to memorize the stories in scripture, the yeah. parables, the messages, the point, but not the words. Yeah. And, and, and to you, there's a distinction there. And, and you, do you think we're missing out by not having the words? I, I think so. Uh, and some of that's very practical for me. So growing up in the Protestant church, yes, we did memorize some scripture. You know, we had our little competitions at vacation Bible school or whatever. And I was great at those, man. I could win. Um, but there's something different about when we begin as – I guess as adults, so, you know, we're thinking through this. It's not just an activity to really want to hide God's word in our heart. Hmm. The practical part doesn't come just memorizing scripture. There's, that's just an activity, right? I mean, we can put our minds to something just like we can memorize songs. What's exciting is when a guy comes back to a group one week and a scripture he's memorized has come out. At just, you know, God's given him a situation with another man, with his wife, with a kid. And that scripture just bubbles out with spe special meaning to him. He's like, now it's his scripture. Okay, so I, I think I'm getting what you're saying here is that it's not just memorizing scripture. It's, it's about allowing men or giving men the access to have scripture come alive in their life in a very relevant way. Absolutely. Yeah, well, that, well, that sounds attractive now. Yeah. The other didn't. <laughs> Well, exactly. So, and, and so this is a part when you use a process to train guys, there's some element of this that a guy that's got the hunger that you were talking about earlier, they want more. To some extent, we get them to commit to something they don't really want to do in memorizing scripture. And then we watch as God unfolds that when the guy lives up to his commitment, because most men, if they sign their name to something and commit to do it, they'll do it. It might be a duty. But when God meets them then in that scripture, all of a sudden it lights them up and they go, oh, that's why we're hiding God's word in our heart. That's why I was in scripture to do that because mm. God uses it through us. So it's not about words on a page or words in our brain. It's about that's the living word of God that now is in my heart. And when God wants to use it, man, he will bring it up just like that. I don't need the book right in front of me anymore. Chris, I think you should go into the Catholic churches and teach that point. <laughs> we would love to do that. I, re I really do. Like, because you just created something I've never heard before. Hmm. Like you really broke that down. So simple, but it, yeah, growing up, I was always, oh, memorize it, memorize it, memorize it. But there was never the why. Yeah. Well, yeah. why do I do that? How's that actually going to help me? What yeah. am I going to, is it only used as a weapon to beat down other people and make them wrong? <laughs> Right. Like you did in, in your, your Bible school or whatever. Yeah. It's like, I always, I love to win and I beat people down with God's word. Like, yeah, I never saw that as, as well, I don't want to do that. I don't want to hurt people with God's word, but for you, you know, really to put those words to it, to, to make it come alive in my own life in a way where God will bring that specific scripture that I'm memorizing, that verse will show up in my life this week, this month in a very real and tangible way where I go, Oh, that's what that means. I got it. Yeah. Like I'm never going to, uh, I'm never going to forget 
yeah. that verse because yeah. it was real. It was tangible. I could touch it. I could feel it in my life. That, that is awesome. Thank you for going there. Go speak in Catholic churches, would you? All right. And then uh, your, what's your number three? Uh, go to God with your issues. How is that different than your morning quiet time of listening to the Father? Well, so, so it's one piece. So if there's the piece of quiet time, which is us pursuing God through the scripture and looking to see what he has to say, we wrap the, the memorization into that. But then the last piece is prayer. And part of that is personal prayer. So how you pray um, kind of at the end of your quiet time. Now, we use a simple method. All right. We're every man a warrior. We use war as an acronym. We need to learn to worship God, which we say that's through, that's through praise. That's through Thanksgiving. That's through getting quiet and listening. Uh, we need to admit our sins. Here's something, you know, Catholics do way better than the rest of us. I think at, at least having in the process, it's important to confess our sins. God already knows our sins. He knows them, but there's something about when we fess up to them, you go, Oh, not only do you know, it's a sin God, but I know. So we get guys to, uh, to admit sin. And then the end is request. Yes, it's important. God wants us to bring our request to him. So we teach guys a model just to get them started. Joseph, it's amazing how many of us can have been in church our whole lives. And we do not know how to pray to God. We certainly don't know how to pray with a group of other men. And there's power in that. There's relationship that builds in that. And so again, we take a very practical approach. Initially, a guy may literally be reading his prayer off the page just to get him started, but he's doing it in the context with other men. And by the time we're done, I mean, it is heart moving to see some guys who have moved from uh, dear God uh, to a heartfelt discussion with God, prayer for their brothers, prayer for their wives. It's, it's really neat. Mm. So I, I like the acronym WAR right? It's very manly. Very manly. It's also very violent, but whatever. <laughs> um, worship, admit sin, admit your sin, and then request. I also like that you said, hey, Catholics are better at, you know, number two, admitting sin, yeah. right? Yeah. They actually have a process for it called confession or reconciliation. Yeah. Wouldn't it be nice if we joined forces again? Wouldn't it be great <laughs> if we unified Protestants and Catholics, and we stopped all this freaking fighting over high level theology that doesn't even apply to our practical lives. Most of us are in crisis mode. We're not sitting there in these theological debates. We're, we're dealing with like financial stress. We're dealing with like marriage breakdowns. We're dealing with our kids looking at porn. We're dealing with our own porn addictions. You yep. think we're going high level theology, but yet we'll sit there and debate with other guys and make them wrong because they, they worship a little different than us. Yep. Wouldn't it be great if we actually joined forces and started <laughs> using this acronym of worship, admitting sin, and then requesting and used it together powerfully? Yep. What would the world look like, in your opinion, if we started doing that? Yeah, you know, I think this is one of the things that, that's making every man a warrior work the way it is. Again, I've said it's not because it's a fancy piece of material. It's simple stuff. But I think it's the simplicity that does it, is we don't dive into deep theological things. We go to very practical and relevant ways that a man can live out his relationship with Jesus day to day. And we've talked about the first stage that you know, our first book is about that skill of walking with God. But then when you get into the second and third books, we get practical. And we really took these out of uh, the instructions in Scripture about what elders should look like. Um, because it, Paul knew this. He talked about marriage. He talked about raising kids. He talked about money. He talked about work. He talked about sex and moral purity. You just listed all those with slightly different words for, for today's relevance. That's the stuff guys are worried about. So now let's take this skill we've helped them develop, this simple skill of relationship with God, and let's go deal with the, the places where men are most afraid to fail. Let's go right at them. Mm. And so that's what we do is uh, we take quiet time, we take scripture memory, we take prayer, and we apply it to the practical areas of the man's life. I love what you're up to and God has me up to similar things, right? This is what I do with my spiritual coaching. I walk, walk guys through what I call a 12 week spiritual boot camp, yep. right? It's a boot camp. Yep. Why? Because most of the guys that come to me as clients are in crisis mode in one or more areas of their life. I have to help them get out of the crisis first before they can really start to yeah. like even think about discipling another guy, they first have to sit with the God of the universe and get discipled themselves, meaning yeah. they have to go in and do the inner work and let God heal them and restore them from childhood wounds. So many guys are walking around in their 50s and 60s with deep hurts, yeah. 
deep hurts. They were shot as a kid. Think of it this way. They were spiritually shot with a bullet. The bullet's still in there. The skin has healed, but the bullet's still in there and it's irritating and it's, it's, it's filling up with disease and they know something's wrong, but they won't go in and look at it because they don't want to open up the wound because they're scared. So they co learn to cope with it. They learn to move a certain way and deal with the pain. But, but to everyone listening right now, I got to say, God is not a God. He's not a father that leaves his son walking around with a bullet in him. Hmm. He's a father that wants to do heart surgery yeah, I love on that. every human heart. He wants to restore you. You don't have to stay in this pain anymore. And, and it really, like, I don't know if irritates is the right word, but it really irritates me or hurts me to see so many men and women walking around with these spiritual bullets and wounds in them and learning to cope. When God, like you said, Chris, has so much more for them. He wants full healing. God does not do 10% healing. It's 100% healing every single time. Shows up for you in that, brother. Well, you know, one of the, uh, the things that I catch is you're talking about, you know, what God's got you at work in. He's put me in a specific place with every man a warrior. But the reality is those things are tools, important tools, useful tools. But the end of that pathway, whether you get to it through something like we're doing with every man a warrior, when you coach a guy individually, it's all taken us to the one tool that never changes, which is that relationship with Jesus and the scriptures that tell us about him. And so that's all we do in the kind of roles that you and I fill is we just use the tools God has given us to take guys to that place. And um, I, I definitely feel what you're saying that it, it does irritate me. I do get, um, there's a term George Barna put in one of his books, he called holy discontent. That we get to this point, we're in our faith walk and whether it's personally for us that we feel holy discontent or in this greater body of Christ, it's the bride of Christ, right? We're supposed to build it up and make it good. And yet we can just see the places where we're just, I don't know, we're just laying back. We're not really diving in and having a personal relationship with somebody that's already been there. So when you coach a man, you get to walk him along, not only hearing your path, because we connect to each other with stories, but to help him see that there are steps for him to take to have his own path that gets him closer and closer to Jesus. And that's what we do in Every Man a Warrior, through the stories that are in it, whether it's me leading, we've got our friend Joe that's led, who, whoever is helping to facilitate through it, all we're doing is sharing our own stories. And I mean, that's how Jesus did it with a group of guys. He gathered around with guys and built personal relationship in order to show people what a real relationship with God looked like. That's all we want to do. All right, BC Nation, we're listening with Chris Ackerson. You can find him at everymanawarrior.com. Do you like Chris as much as I do? I like this guy. He's a good man. He's a good man. All right, Chris, I'm going to welcome you to my favorite part of the show. It's very Catholic. Ooh. Welcome to the confession round, my friend. Very All Catholic. Right, very round. Catholic. Very Catholic. All right, don't be scared. Don't be scared. You're a warrior. All right, I'm going to ask you 10 quick fire questions. You'll have about three seconds to answer each. Don't overthink it. It's just for fun. Are you ready, sir? I'm ready. All right. What's your favorite thing about God? Uh, that he is really big. Got it. What's your least favorite thing about God? That he is very mysterious and sometimes I can't figure him out. Ah, you know, it's like an ant trying to figure out a human. <laughs> That's There's hilarious. always more for me to learn about God. I'm never going to run out of things to learn. Exactly. All right. Now, if you're being real and transparent with our audience, we all struggle with something. What are you struggling with, whether it be professionally or personally? right now in your walk? <clears throat> um, because of the challenge of another guy, I have been struggling with, do I really accept that Christ made me fully righteous or do I keep living my life like I'm still a dirty sinner? Ooh. Ooh. A big one? Yeah, it was a big Love challenge. I've, I've been wrestling with that for about two months now because I believe it here, but then I'll watch things in my life that say, mm, do you really? <laughs> oh, that's so good. That's so real. What are you most afraid of? Um, being found out that I'm, that maybe I'm not all that I present myself to be. Do you have spiritual imposter syndrome? Oh yeah. Um, I, I like, um, John Eldridge is an author that I like, and he calls it being a poser. A poser, a, a Christian poser. poser. Oh, I call it bipolar Christian. <laughs> <laughs> us Southern Christian guys are 
fully trained in being posers. Got it. What did you spend way too much time doing in your 20s? Mm. In the early 20s, it was uh, misbehaving, drinking, partying. In the later 20s, it was way overworking. Work mm. on. Yeah. Yeah. Man, we act out in our lives when we don't have deep relationship with God. And then we hurt ourselves, we hurt our spouse, and we hurt our kids. That's what it looks like. What secret fear do you have about people? Hmm. Um, that I don't really know who they are, and so I'm not sure if I can trust them. So are they posers? I'm worried about me being a poser, which means I'm worried about them being a poser. You know, that's the exact thing that posers worry about, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. All right. What do you wish you had learned sooner about God? Uh, that it's personal. It's not about religion. It's about relationship. Excellent. What's a new habit you want to form? Uh, better physical health, more exercise. Got it. What's a bad habit you want to break? Um, it'll, it'll associate probably sitting down to relax, watching too much TV when I could do other things that would be better serving God or myself. I got that. Yeah. We're not made for sedentary lifestyle. We're yeah. made for movement, right? Pick three words to describe who you are now. Intentional, relational, and faithful. Mm, good words. Pick three words to describe who you were before you experienced God in your heart. Selfish, rash, and prideful. Oh, I think you just summed up every man. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, 95% of our testimonies are this. We're men. We're, we're men. Not. We all struggle with the same stuff. We're not as unique as we think. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And last question. Chris, if you could come back to life after you died, look your wife and your kids, your friends in the eye, and give them only one piece of advice, what would you say to them? going to tie back to the religion versus relationship. Don't get caught up in church activities and don't run away from God. There is a personal relationship and, and you need to go after it. Mm, I love it. Any final wisdom? What's the one thing you want my listener to know about having a relationship with God versus not? Uh, he's there waiting on you. It, it's not that God is not there. He is waiting on you and if, if you're feeling this pull that you talked about earlier, Joseph, step into it. Go, go pursue him. He's waiting. So, Chris, what I'm hearing you say is that if I don't feel connected with God, I'm the one that's blocking. That's right. Is that correct? Yep. yep. It took me a Dang. long time to figure that out. Dang it. I thought it was him. I want to make him wrong, darn it. All right. And, Chris, what's the best way for uh, BC Nation to uh, learn more about you, connect with you? What do you got? Yeah, so you've already mentioned the uh, everymanawarrior.com website is kind of the big general website for uh, the ministry. I've got a personal website that is yourwarriorplan.com. It's yourwarriorplan.com. Um, you'll find when you get there, it's targeted. I'm looking for guys that feel that hunger you've talked about, Joseph. If you're hungry and want to take another step, there's a clear invitation there for you to step in with me, even to have a conversation like you are, and I are having by video. Let's connect personally. Love it. Love it. All right. And BC Nation, if, if you like the way Chris comes across, you like who he is, reach out to him. Go to yourwarriorplan.com. Connect with him personally. He's got a plan. It's for you because you're a warrior. And he, he can help lead you to what your heart's been telling you you actually want, but your brain's been stopping you. Get out of your head. Get into your heart. Your heart makes you happy. Your brain gets you in trouble. It's just what's so. <laughs> All right. Men are and simple. Not hard to figure this out. It's very simple, right? And if you connect with me in any way and, and you think I'm not that much of a pain in the ass or I'm a pain in the ass enough to move you into action, then go to uh, visit josephwarren.net. Jump on a spiritual clarity call with me. I promise you it's going to suck. It's going to suck. But you'll get the life that you want every single time. That's my promise to you. So it's not made for wusses. It's made for men who want more, what Chris is saying as well. So Chris, thank you for uh, showing up the way you did today. Um, and you can find him at everymanawarrior.com, Chris Ackerson. And Chris, I wish you God's love, peace, and joy in your life, my friend. Thank you, Joseph. God bless. Cheers. 
BC Nation, you cannot show up authentically in your life without building faith in your business. If you want the business side of that conversation, I have another podcast called First 100K, where I interview successful entrepreneurs about how they made their first $100,000, because that's where I believe 90% of you are stuck and you can't break through. Go to first100k.com to find out how. I'm Joseph Warren. You were made for greatness. So stop being a wuss and start being a winner. Have a blessed day and I'll see you right back here next week.